So how can I apply this theory to a real example? Well, let's consider a child's playground area that's in need of some serious refurbishment. The first thing we'd like to do is paint the entire surface of that playground, which is circular in shape. If I can calculate the area of this circle, I can buy the right amount of paint that I need. Now I know that the area of any circle is found using pi r squared. So if I can calculate that area, I can buy the right amount of paint. I don't want to buy a tin that's far too big, as that's going to cost me too much money, or indeed too small, as I'm just going to go back and have to buy another pot of paint. All pots of paint should tell us how much coverage they give us in terms of square meterage. So that should be very useful in buying the right amount of paint for this project. The information I've been given for this project is that the diameter, the distance across the centre of this circle, is in fact 20 metres. Now I need to remember that the diameter is twice the radius, and it's the radius that I need for my calculation. So the radius is actually half of this. So that would be 10 metres. So I can now apply this to my formula. Applying this knowledge to my formula gives me an area which is equal to pi multiplied by 10 squared. Now how can I put that into these scientific calculators? Now I know pi is equal to 3.142 and I know that from memory and it is worth remembering that. In fact, this is a rounded version of pi, and it has a lot more decimal places than I've shown here. But fortunately, both calculators have an exact version of pi programmed into them, so there's no need to keep typing it. On this calculator, you'll find it pressing the inverse button, which refers to the purple sections of the buttons, and it is just here, just above the EXP button. You will then need to press equals, and you will get 3.1415 and so many other digits here. On this calculator, it's a little bit easier, you just need to press this button here and it will come up exactly on there. So, I enter in my value of pi, however I do it. I could type 3.142 directly, or I could use the inverse, the EXP button on here, which refers to pi, or indeed press the pi button on here. So that's entered into the calculator already. I then type in, after my pi, a multiplication of 10, but then, I press the x squared button and that will then square this 10 on both calculators. So that's the button I need to press next. I then simply press equals and my answer will be 314.1592654 and my units for this particular project will be meters squared. Now obviously for that is going to be a huge tin of paint. Common mistakes people make with this formula, area is equal to pi r squared. Using the previous example as before, they enter in their value of pi, they then multiply it by 10, and then they press the equals button, and then they press the x squared button. What in fact you've actually done with that is that you have squared all of this. So at this point they would have got 31.14 and a bit, it is then that which will have been squared by this function here. And that will give us an overall answer of 986.96 and a bit more. And clearly that isn't the right answer.